Hello friends, it's Chris Yost at Wesley, and it's a great day to be gathered with you wherever you're at. If you're here in Hunt County, Texas, or if you're somewhere else in the world, um, by the Holy Spirit, we are one as we uh, seek to find a word from God as we read through the Gospel of Luke. Friends, we're finishing up the Gospel of Luke today, and uh, those of you who are keeping track in, in real time, this is the text that I actually preached on last Sunday. So um, if you are joining us and you didn't hear that sermon, um, it was April the 11th of 2021. You can watch that sermon on our YouTube channel or on Facebook. Um, anyways, uh, I'm going to reserve um, the right to not just try to re-preach a whole sermon on here. Is that a deal? <laughs> <laughs> but this is the text I just got done with. So here we go. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 53. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While, their joy, uh, while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into the heavens. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple uh, uh, blessing God. <clears throat> I think the main thing I'd picked up from the sermon and offered to you all um, was that taking note that complete understanding or complete belief does not stand in the way of us being one of God's disciples, one of Jesus' disciples. Um, one of the fallacies that we believe in, in um, I guess it's certainly modern Christianity, is that somehow we have to have all the answers before we it makes sense or before we're acceptable to God. And, and friends, that's just... Um, it sounds cavalier, and perhaps it is, but it's just not true. From the earliest days, the people who Jesus knew personally carried doubts in them. These doubts were to be examined and questioned. As a matter of fact, I think that's one of the reasons Jesus oftentimes, certainly in Mark's gospel, points out the ignorances or the questions that are carried. Not because he's making fun of them, not because he's even... Um, poking at them, um, but he's calling that to their attention. Perhaps doubts are the springboard for us discovering the what's next. Perhaps doubt is the place, that, that place of inquiry um, that God gives us. Um, maybe we should stop avoiding them so much. Maybe we would grow spiritually as a people if we embraced those doubts and, and examined those in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The second thing I'd offer to you <clears throat> 
when Jesus says that uh, there at the verse 49, he says that um, he is sending upon you what my father promised to stay in the city and clothe till you're clothed on high. Um, this is where the work of Jesus is completed mostly or partially, the already and not yet part of the kingdom of God. You have to remember that Jesus came so that he would set the things right as we understand them broken in Adam and Eve. In other words, Adam and Eve died to their soul. They died spiritually um, in their, their desire to be their own God. And Jesus, in setting aside that desire to, to be God, even though he is God with us, kind of reopens that doorway where the breath of life, the Holy Spirit that was lost by Adam and Eve, is regained through Jesus Christ. He's the one that sends that life back upon us. Um, final thing I'll offer to you. Last summer, I think in June, I actually read through the book of Acts. So we're not going to be rereading the book of Acts. However, if you would like to continue this journey, you can look back at June of last year or just flip over past the Gospel of John and start reading Acts chapter 1. If you were to compare Luke chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 and Acts chapter 1 verse 1 maybe 2 and 3, you will notice that it's volume 1 and volume 2 of the same work. Luke is writing to this guy Theophilus and he's writing in the first in the book of Luke, which is the first volume, and the book of Acts is the second volume. So the best way you can read the life, the birth, life, death, resurrection, the ascension, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and the sending of the church into the world is by reading the book of Luke straight through, and then at the end of it, picking up the book of Acts and reading it straight through. So just a little tidbit. God bless y'all. Thanks for being a part of this reading of Luke. And I have, um, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and we'll pick up in the Psalms tomorrow. We're going to literally start at Psalm 1. Uh, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this good news. And thank you that Luke was attentive enough to write down this orderly account of all the things that the eyewitnesses had talked about and had reported we thank you, God, for every hand that translated it from generation to generation who faithfully articulated um, the words that now through archaeology we can confirm have been around for almost 2,000 years, unbroken. Um, God, thank you for this gift in our lives and thank you how even today you speak your word into us and through us in the reading of Scripture. Bless the listeners and bless all that we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen.